Harrison. Uh, I'm Ben McCluskey. I am uh, Tim Davis. Uh, we got to start off a little introduction of uh, what we're doing here. Um, we are representing Farmers Insurance Group, and we are uh, specifically representing uh, Maria Urazo. She is the owner and agent of uh, the specific Farmers Insurance, Ag uh, insurance Agency that we're representing. She's located uh, on Eastern now in uh, Grand Rapids near Wyoming. Uh, we are ho hoping to gain a better understanding of demographics and, uh, in the surrounding areas and hoping to improve uh, uh, her service as well as her clientele. Uh, she is the only Hispanic owned and operated uh, agency uh, in the area which uh, provides lots of clients for her as well. Uh, her goal and ours as well is to promote business and gain a better understanding of the non-Hispanic community uh, surrounding her to help, uh, improve her business. Uh, a little, uh, little uh, background uh, about insurance. There are, uh, insurance carries account for nearly 3% uh, of their gross domestic fund in the United States. Uh, and the insurance industry employs over 2 million people, such as Farmers, Geico, State Farm, Progressive, lots of commercials out there, you've seen them all. So it not only offers uh, service to millions of people, but also offers employment services uh, for many people as well. Uh, currently there are uh, over 6,000 different insurance agencies uh, and companies uh, out there to offer services to people. Uh, so again, a vast market with lots of opportunities for both the uh, employers uh, and the market. Uh, different types of services that insurance offers, uh, life, uh, motorcycle, renter's insurance, uh, auto home, as well as uh, personal watercrafts and RVs. Uh, Maria specifically deals with large amounts of uh, home insurance uh, for renters, as well as auto insurance. Currently, she has uh, nearly 12,000 clients. And again, the only Hispanic-owned farmer's agent uh, in West Michigan. Uh, additionally, she is one of the only few Spanish-speaking uh, agents in the area, so that is a big attraction for her, specifically where she's located. Uh, she attracts clients by advertising, as you see, bi-weekly, Hispanic newspapers, as well as uh, corporate mail, newsletters, postcards from uh, uh, farmers as well. Our task for, for Maria is to gain a better understanding of the demographics of the surrounding areas, uh, especially those needing insurance. Uh, looking for a better understanding of how to reach the non-Hispanic population as well and how to better serve them. Uh, she's also looking to determine who or what needs insurance, uh, what type of people need what specific kind of insurance and where these types of people are located. And also the best way to reach these people and subsequently gain more clients for them. Uh, our area of study, from the map you can see we focused on Wyoming, Granville, Byron Center, Jenison, Hudsonville, uh, Zealand, and Hunt. Uh, Maria, as I mentioned earlier, is currently located at 2435 Eastern, which is uh, between Eastern, or excuse me, between Kentwood and Wyoming. And I don't know if anyone's been through that area, but Wyoming between 28th and Burton is predominantly uh, Hispanic owned homes and businesses. Uh, so that is um, a good starting area for Maria, but she's looking to uh, expand that to the non Hispanic client as well. Our hypotheses we are hoping to read our research can narrow down the specific areas that Maria can grow her organization, not only with different different demographic groups, but also with uh, locations. We're hoping our research shows large amounts of Caucasians and Kent County and Western Kent County that can provide large growth uh, opportunities for Maria's agency. Uh, Maria is currently focused on very small, the very small populations surrounding her business, and she's definitely looking to expand that. Uh, lots of mainly Hispanic homes and businesses throughout her, uh, her area, uh, so she's looking to grow that as well. Okay, first we're going to look at the different ethnicities in the areas that we said we were studying. Um, as you can see, there's around a 9 to 1 ratio 
between the Caucasian population and the Hispanic population, which was the next largest. Um, only in the two largest populations, which were Wyoming and Holland, which were the two biggest cities that we studied, um, was there even close to a 20% um, population of Hispanics. Um, the most significant statistic that we found as far as ethnicity was that there was a 22.5% population of Hispanics in Holland. Um, with such a large population of Caucasians and Hispanics, it makes a really good opportunity for Maria to expand to Holland um, because she already has the Hispanic client base. She has that as a selling point. Um, and on top of that, there's room for her to expand into other here we have another um, breakdown of the ethnicities. This one is a ratio of Hispanic to non-Hispanic population. Um, really, we just wanted to show this one to show how much of a difference there is. Um, from our briefing, we knew that Maria wanted to expand to other ethnic ethnicities. Um, she didn't necessarily want to move away from Hispanic, but like I said, we just wanted to show that there's that much that isn't being um, addressed by her. Um, then we chose to break down the populations by age. Uh, we were given as one of our criteria to go between um, the age of 20 and 55. We went a little further just to show where the rest of the population was. Um, but these are the age ranges that are typically going to purchase insurance products. In all of the areas we studied, um, the age ranges um, about between 40 and 50% of the population fell in the age range that she wanted to attract. Um, Byron Center and Jenison had the oldest populations with the median age at 38 and 40. Um, but a closer look shows that Holland and Wyoming had the largest amount of um, elderly or above the age range that she was looking for. interesting thing we did find is that Holland has a much younger age range and they start from 20 but they have the higher, highest percentages between 20 and 55. Um, and then Byron Center had the largest population of older adults within the target range. Um, this is relevant in combination with the housing value chart we'll see a little later. Okay, then we broke it down by gender. Um, as you can see it's pretty even as far as, um, and they're all hovering around 48 and 50 percent. Um, the most interesting part of this one was the population density. Um, um, as you can see, the population density for Fire Center, there's not a lot per square mile, where some, some a place like Wyoming, which has the largest population of the areas we studied um, has nearly 3,000 people per square mile, so it's pretty compacted. Uh, as far as growth in the population, um, the best place we found was probably Byron Center, and as you can see, the percentage of growth is way higher than anywhere else that we're looking at. Um, and with the population density being as low as it was in the last slide, there's a lot of room to grow. see the uh, populations in Byron Center and so Zealand, um, Hudsonville, they're fairly similar. Hudsonville's a little higher, um, but the, um, the density in Hudsonville and Zealand, if you can think of the last slide. Yeah. Um, the density in um, Hudsonville and Zealand was a lot higher than it was in Byron Center. So the higher density combined with um, the, uh, the lower populations, um, like I said, it, it tells us that there's a lot of room for expansion. There's a lot of growth potential in Byron Center. And then, um, as we said earlier, one of the major products that she sells is Vehicle, uh, vehicle insurance, whether it's RV, 
car, that kind of thing. So we looked at how many vehicles per range area. Obviously with the largest population, Wyoming and Holland are going to have the most vehicles. Here you see that uh, Zealand, Hudsonville, and Byron Center are all pretty similar. Uh, but the amount of households that own multiple vehicles is quite a bit higher in Byron Center. Um, this suggests that there may be higher incomes and possibly more families with the need for multiple vehicles in Byron Center. Um, then we looked at housing, since home insurance is also another one for products. Total housing units, um, as with every statistic, uh, housing follows the population and the population density. So there's a lot more homes in Wyoming and in Holland. Byron Center and Jenison have the lowest percentage of uh, vacant housing, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of foreclosures or anything. What we figured it meant was that the houses are new enough, there hasn't been enough turnover because these are still growing areas. Um, then we looked at rentals, since rental insurance is also another one of her products. Um, the largest populations of renters are in Wyoming and in um, Holland and Granville. So Wyoming and Holland are the larger of the cities. Granville, um, I don't know how many of you have driven through Granville, but it seems like there's an apartment complex every block. Um, this also is, uh, um, those three are also where the largest amount of businesses are. So workers live in those areas in order to be close to work. Um, here we look at home values. Um, the majority of the houses in all of the areas fall between um, 50,000 and 200,000. Byron Center has the largest number of homes valued over 200,000. And as you can see, their numbers are quite a bit larger once you get past that range. As with population and homes, the largest number of businesses are in, oh, sorry, almost 70% of the homes in the city of Wyoming are valued below 150,000, um, which may be due to having the population density that it did. Um, being that close together with everything um, tends to drop the property value since space is kind of at a premium. Okay, okay now um, business insurance and IRAs are also um, a product that Maria offers. Um, financial services, employee pension plans. So we wanted to see what kind of opportunities were there for, um, for, bit for business products. Um, Wyoming, Holland, and um, have the number, largest number of businesses since they're the largest cities. And Byron Center, Hudsonville, and Zealand have probably the least opportunity for this amount of opportunity for this product. Um, also, we looked at where ins other insurance agencies were, just to kind of get an idea of if the market was saturated in those areas as far as the ratio of agents to population. Um, it's much lower in Granville, Holland, and Hudsonville. So these would be good areas for her to kind of try and maybe grab a few of those customers. Finally, we wanted to take a look at the type of industries in all these areas, just to kind of provide a snapshot from Maria of the types of businesses that she um, may be potentially working with as she moves into these areas. Um, 40, as you can see, 42% of the areas in services. Um, the next largest is retail. Um, this chart kind of shows the change in West Michigan from a larger manufacturing area to more of a public dollar sales and retail area. Now we'll look at what all these statistics mean um, for the potential growth of farmers insurance. So areas for immediate growth, we think Wyoming is a great area to expand into. It currently has the largest overall population of all areas studied. It also has the most geographically efficient, uh, lots of people in that area. Granville is another location. There's a large amount of businesses there for business insurance needs. And the majority of the population is between ages 20 and 55. And 
28% of the homes are rented in that area, so you'd have a high um, renter's insurance rate in that area compared to those customers. A couple other areas, Byron Siren is up and coming. There's a lot of people moving into that area, and it's expected to have the largest population growth in the next five years compared to all the other cities. It has the lowest number of insurance agents in that area, so that'd be a good area to target because there's not a lot of insurance agencies in that area for those people. Holland and Zeeland is not a landlocked by other cities and townships. Holland has a large Hispanic population, so it would be easy for her business to go over there and get clients right away. She wouldn't have to do a lot of advertising. I should just have to mention that she is Spanish speaking and she has the ability to do that. Zeeland has a large farming opportunity along with all the areas in Zeeland. Um, there's a lot of farmland out there. Holland has a recreation and travel equipment opportunities. A lot of people own boats in Holland there's worrying us up and down the coast on Lake Mac that she could target. Some conclusions and recommendations. The conclusion that we came to is the research shows that the best opportunities for long-term growth are in the Holland and Byron Center area. There's a significant Caucasian population in these areas that Marie can attempt to provide services to in the cities and townships. And while all areas are providing opportunities for life, home, and automobile insurance, Business insurance and financial needs are there in that area as well and are abundant, abundant in Holland and Jenison and area. Some other recommendations for Maria that she should look into are billboards along US 31. Uh, there's a lot of people that travel from the Lakeshore to Grand Rapids or vice versa that would see those billboards and that would be a great opportunity for her to advertise her business and reach those customers. Also creating business relationships with uh, local area marinas in Holland, being able to see who's selling those boats out there and who has boats listed in that area. She, she, she could grab some of those businesses. Also the Harley Davidson dealership doing the motorcycle insurance. John McHills also sells watercraft and other recreational vehicles. And Drummond Maria in Holland. She could cross promote through there and advertising to special events that would help develop those relationships with those clients and hopefully get some new customers. She should look into some future research about watercraft ownership in the Holland and Zealand area. A lot of people own boats out there, so she should look specifically into that. And the data is driving ownership of winter and extreme sports, such as snowmobiles or other types of things you would do in the winter. Uh, she could possibly grow in that area as well. That's it, any questions?